Hey everybody, Chandler Bullitt here, and joining me today is a good friend, Andrew Faraby. He's a fellow San Diegan. He's a host of the Knowledge for Men podcast, knowledgeformen.com, reaching millions of people all around the globe, huge podcast, and he just authored his book, The Dating Playbook for Men, and I'm really excited about this interview. We're going to dive in. This is a perfect case study. Andrew and I were talking about this. This book launch has just been crushing it. It's going to be huge for him, huge for his business. We were just talking before this interview about how this is a great example of someone who's several steps of where you, you are right now, but who wasn't just a few months ago. Um, I remember just, just a few months ago, he's talking about this idea in his head and he, the guy just implements and knocks things out. And in no time, he went from book idea in his head all the way to launching it. And it's going to be bringing in a ton of money for his business. So excited to dive into that today on this interview. Andrew, welcome, man. All right, Chandler, good to be here. Happy to be here. I remember sitting in your, on your couch telling you about this idea I had for a book. And here we are now. The book is live. You know, I'm in the middle of a launch. It's been less than a week. And yeah, let's let's do this. I'm excited to share my experiences so far. Awesome. And and as as you talk, we'll have this massive wall of books, which I'm so jealous of. Every time I go over to your house, you got this massive Yeah, man. You gotta get your read on. You gotta get your read on. <laughs> I, I used to be a maniac with books uh, you know, many years ago. I still read, but you know, you gotta read. Reading's reading knowledge is power. Well, let's dive into it. Um, first off, let's talk about why you decided to do this book. Um, I know it, but not a lot of people listen and do. Yeah, yeah. I felt that I, you know, I wrote it. I never wanted to write a dating book. Like this is, it's called the Dating Playbook for Men. And it wasn't something that I'm necessarily, I don't want to be a dating coach. I don't want to be a dating type of guru or pickup guy. That's not what I'm going for at all. Uh, mainly, this was just, I felt like this book needed to come out. I feel like this needed to really go out and impact other guys out there because of what's available, I felt was really damaging and it was more of a short-term instant gratification fix versus a long-term sustainable strategy to having an awesome dating life and ultimately ending up with the woman of your dreams. So that was my inspiration for this book here. And this book, it, it came out of an old product, right? Like one of the products you had? Yeah, so what's interesting about this book and for other people out there who are maybe wanting to put together a book uh, quickly. I, I, I wrote this book in about 30 days uh, and it's 200 pages and it's full of just intense, really good content. Like it's full of meat and potatoes. Uh, it's, it's full of the filet mignon, so to speak. But this book came from an audio program that I had that I launched over a year ago. It was a five figure launch. It did well, but since then, like I said, I didn't really want to become this dating guy, uh, so I didn't spend too much time marketing it. And it was this awesome product that was just sitting on the shelf, and it wasn't really it was selling, but it wasn't selling at the at the level as my other products were. So I took this old product that I had and went inside of it and transcribed the audio product, and then went back and, and redid the program kind of updated it, added more things, made it more clean, made it more free flowing, uh, new ideas, new insights into the book, removed things that I didn't like. Then I went and hired someone, obviously just following what is in self-publishing school and got someone to review the book and edit the book. Someone who had written over 15 books uh, and edited uh, hundreds of other books for other people for a very low price to make this, a, just give it that kind of, that real book, you know, that, that, that impact that I wanted to make. So it wasn't an existing product that I then transcribed and turned into uh, an ebook. And so was there a lot of grunt work involved from going from that transcription to the editor and actually make it into a polished book or what was that process like? Um, honestly, it was a lot of fun. I loved kind of revisiting my old content that I wrote, my own fun experiences I had in the past, but having someone to work with made it very, very easy actually. I mean, she pretty much just told me like, Hey, this over here, do this, move this around. Hey, let's edit this. I think you're repetitive here. Uh, pretty much just kind of telling me what to do. And, and as myself, the content creator, just kind of deciding, no, nope, this is important. We need this. Oh no, no. She actually has a good point here. And just listening to what she said and working with someone allowed my product to become shorter in, in length and then more impactful. That's great. And so like the actual writing process, was it, was it difficult? 
I mean, it, it sounds like you were able to find someone and kind of bounce off. But were there, was there ever a time where you're just like, man, this is really tough and I don't know the direction I'm going or I'm, I'm having trouble getting through this thing? Like, what was that like? You know, I, I think the, the biggest thing was really just finding the time to do it because I'm already busy. But but to tell you the truth, like writing the book, um, it wasn't too hard. It just came down to me finding the time and being able to outsource a lot of different things. Uh, all the other aspects of writing the book, uh, like or putting the book together, like the, the book cover, the product description, and uh, there's there's so much involved, but just really being more of the entrepreneur and outsourcing a lot of things to experts uh, who, who can really do that and own that while I focus on kind of the main, other, the other aspects of running my business. How'd you find your editor? Elance. <laughs> awesome. Elance. What do you do? Yeah, Elance, and I just you know I put up a rate, and I just had a bunch of people apply, and I just reviewed everyone who I thought would be a good fit, who had the most experience, who had the most reviews, who had the highest dollar amount that they've worked with, and just found someone that I liked, and gave them a test, and kind of sent them a sample of what I gave them like a few uh, a short paragraph, uh, and just had them kind of what, what do you think about this, and had them send it back to me, and they they I liked what they did, and just decided to work with them. Was that before you hired him to multiple people or just to the person that you were thinking about about hiring? Um, I narrowed it down to two people and I had both of them. I sent them both a document and had them kind of look at it and, and just, I just want to see what would happen. I gave them very little direction and one of them just really went above and beyond. And I felt like, wow, if they did that for my entire book, then this is going to be a good fit. Cool. Cool. And what were some other criteria you used to, to, weed out all the applications and get it down to just those two. Yeah. If, if they didn't speak, uh, you know, if they didn't speak English, like I didn't, you know, I, I, I'm speaking to a younger demographic, uh, particularly guys in their mid to, uh, mid 30, mid twenties to mid, uh, thirties. And so, you know, I, I want them to be able to have that type of language. So I wanted someone who was closer to my age range and also someone who, uh, was native English speaker from American. And so, that was right off the bat, like someone from a foreign country, I just eliminated those. Someone who had zero jobs, I eliminated those. Someone who had less than four and a half stars, I eliminated those. And so it, after about like, you know, there was 12 applicants, like it came down to just like three people and then just narrowed it down to one after I sent out those kind of test samples. Great. Now, um, another question, then we'll move more into the marketing side of things. Um, why why the dating playbook if, if you don't want to be known as as like a dating guy or pickup guy or anything like that what what made you decide to go with that type of book and, and this topic yeah well yeah I, I don't want to be a dating guy I don't I don't plan on speaking uh, uh, like at some dating summit or something like I have no desire to I, I I personally had a lot of pain in my life and I overcame this pain so I had learned a really good practical approach to uh, having a healthy dating life and and just being with uh, high quality women, and ultimately uh, the answer in the dating playbook is to become more of a stronger man. The grounded man is what I call it inside the book, and I have a live event where I help men become more powerful men. It's this awakening live retreat, and so I wanted guys to understand that, like, hey, if if you want to work on your dating life, like, you really need to focus on yourself and build up your life and become the most powerful version of yourself. And then when you understand just a few things about dating, when you go out, it makes perfect sense and you you end up getting way more results. But the answer is not in some pickup line or some some little approach or some how you do this or that, but it's really about yourself. And so. Uh, when guys understand that and they see results in their dating life and they're like, wow, working on myself really did work out, um, it leads them to think like, wow, I wonder what this awakening, this live event Andrew puts on is all about. And so my book does solve the problem. Like it does help guys in their dating lives. Like I put so much value, I put my heart and soul into it. It is, it's not like a 30 page ebook. It's over 200 pages. And, um, you know, right now it's ranked number three, uh, in relationships and it's in the top 10 for dating, um, uh, for dating on Amazon in the paid section above like all these other like Neil Strauss and you know all these other pickup guys and and I'm really excited for that you know because guys are really loving uh, what they're reading because it's not about cheesy pickup lines or gimmicks um, but enough about dating you know it's not why um, you know for the marketing from a, from a marketing perspective someone who's interested in improving their dating life is also probably interested in improving their life as men and I have a higher ticket event that solves that problem as well. Mm -hmm. So it was a great 
way to solve a smaller problem with dating while at the same time offering massive value for a low price inside my Amazon, the book for the ebook. And then, um, you know, we could talk more about how I set up the funnel and uh, dive into that. Uh, but I believe that it's a massive lead generator for my high ticket event. And that's ultimately where I could serve the most value to people is one on one or in a group experience with just a small group of men. And um, so that's that's why I wrote the dating book. Awesome. And, and it seems like and I think the big takeaway for people there is the ultimate thing that you sell and, and, and what this book leads to and how, you know, you're, you're going to monetize it on the back end and all that stuff is helping men become better men. But right, the right. symptom, like that's not, that's never going to be the book they're looking for, right? Right, like, right. They don't know be a it. better man. The, the playbook to be a better man. Like they're not looking for that. But right. the symptom and what they are looking for is their dating life. And it's something that's sucking or going bad. And so they're like, I got to get something to fix this. And then, and then that, that just like, you know, I know we're, we were talking about this before the interview, just and another speaker here, Russell Brunson, just like, uh, we're both fans of his and his one, 108 split test winners. And that the type yeah, of person who I, sees I got a split it back test book. Yeah, right there. Yeah, it's somewhere back there, yeah. The, the kind of person that sees that book and wants it will right. raise their hand and then ultimately they lead to click funnels or to some other program. Exactly. Exactly. So and, I think that's a great take. Go, go ahead. Uh, and also equally the same is uh with you know Russell Brunson, they were already doing those split tests for themselves. So it wasn't any harder for them to create that product. They were already doing it and then they just turned it into a book and, and gave it to someone like myself. I already had this audio product that was serving that purpose and I just transcribed it and turned it into a book. So I think oftentimes we we think we need to create this book out of thin air when in reality, like we probably already have things that we're doing that are of value to other people and we can really just, you know, uh, package it up in a, in a professional way, you know, the formatting and, and uh, having the right you know, grammar and all the spelling and stuff and getting the right ebook uh, cover or, or designer um, kind of book cover and selling that. And that becomes this massive lead generator for your higher ticket products. Like I'm not interested at all in my sales. Like I don't really, I'm not like, oh, am I going to pay rent with my ebook sales? Like not at all. What I'm most interested in is the leads that come from that book who are going to uh, be interested in my higher ticket events. Absolutely. So is that the number one goal of this book is to bring leads for the higher ticket event? Yeah. And to expose them to knowledge, my knowledge for men podcast. So it's, it's the high ticket stuff and then just to build the brand of knowledge for men. So that then they can listen to more podcasts and eventually lead to something else or to strengthen that relationship further there. Yeah, because the podcast is, you know, I do a bi bi weekly podcast and people who listen to that podcast when I talk to them, that's a completely different uh, prospect versus someone who just found out about me, like who, who doesn't listen to my podcast. My podcast, you know, people feel like they know me, they feel like they've developed this relationship with me. And when I talk to them, it's like, you know, they are very happy and honored to be talking to me versus someone who just uh, came to my website real quick and then opted in. And then I'm talking to them right away. Like they don't, it's not the same relationship. Got it. So let's talk about the marketing piece um, for the book and really dive into that. So you've got the strategy of bringing leads um, for, for the high ticket stuff. Um, you got the book done. You repurposed an old course, um, did the transcription, found a good, good editor. You know, that process is all went through. Um, now, when it comes to the marketing side, what were some of you like, what was some of your strategy on the marketing side? And then we'll get into more tactics and some of the stuff you've done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you know, having spoken with you, I, uh, you know, created this VIP club. So that was the first, that was like the first thing was kind of separating my main list of my general list, which is a lot larger and, uh, you know, sending out this opt-in page saying, Hey, like who wants to get this book for free? Uh, you'll, I'll, I'll give you bonus content. I'll send you videos. Uh, I'll, I'll be, I'll create a private Facebook group where we can talk and you know, I can answer all your questions. Uh, in return, I want you to uh, leave me a helpful review and then share this Amazon book link uh, or the book trailer, which I could talk more about later uh, on social media. And that was all they had to do. And so I sent out some emails promoting it like almost as if it was a launch where I was launching my book promotion to my general list. I ended up getting um, a couple hundred guys, like 250 guys opted in to that. So I had 250 guys in my VIP club. 
Uh, and then, you know, I was posting updates inside the Facebook group. I was emailing them every other day, su such as like, hey, which book cover, like A, B, C, or D? And then, and then all right, I just modified it. Which one's better? Um, I would send them kind of snippets of my book, just letting them know like, hey, just finish this. What do you guys think? And, you know, they'd give feedback. And so just constantly giving them something to engage in so that when I did launch my book and was like, guys, it's here, um, go, let's, let's get the reviews in. Uh, you know, in that first first day, you know, it quickly shot me up to uh, in, in the top five in relationships. Um, I was getting hundreds of downloads. And so the VIP club was in creating a little mini army of guys who want to support and help you uh, launch your book. That was like essential. So the VIP club, it sounds like you managed that group uh, in, in the, the VIP club or the launch team through a Facebook group. Yeah, I used a Facebook group and then I emailed them almost every day. <laughs> awesome. And what was one of the biggest benefits of having that VIP club? They, the open rates are in, in, insanely high. Like if I was just going to send this uh, stuff to my main list, I would have ended up getting a lot of opt outs. They would, cause they, a lot, not everyone is interested in dating and relationships, but I do have a lot of guys who are. So I wanted to separate that. And so I would have ended up getting a lot of unsubscribes if I was emailing every day to my um, my main list and that would have damaged my my list. So I separated it and this smaller list of about 250 guys, like the open rates were insanely high, um, like over 60% and the click rates were over 40%. Um, so it was just a really good healthy list of people who are very engaging and they respond to everything that you send them. And so then, what were some of the other benefits? I guess those people were sharing, were they reviewing? Were yeah, they yeah. I had I had them. Uh, so yeah, they were they reviewed the book when it first came out. They they downloaded the book, they reviewed the book, and so that was essential. And then I had them. Uh, right now, I'm in the process actually of having them reach out to other influencers in this space. And so that was essential is for them to, I, I had them create, a, a, I made a Google spreadsheet and I said, hey guys, uh, I want everyone to put three names of people they know, whether on a podcaster, a blogger, a YouTuber, and uh, basically put their name, uh, their website address or YouTube URL, and then their contact email or their contact form URL. And so that uh, we, we now have this list of over like 150 influencers that I did not know about that they created because they're obviously interested in this space. And so that created uh, this awesome list. And right now what I'm having them do is uh, now that the book is live is, and I have accolades, like I'm you know top, top three, um, ranked number three in relationships for free, free books, uh, number 10 on Amazon. It's a bestseller. It's an Amazon bestseller under dating. Uh, I rank you know, number three for the keyword dating for men on Amazon, uh, leveraging uh, an Amazon super URL, which we'll talk about later. But basically everyone's uh, sending out emails to these influencers and saying like, hey, this guy has this accolades. Um, you know, I, I, I'm a listener of your show. I would, you know, I think he, sh I think he should, you should interview him or you guys should do, you should do a guest post or something. So now it was like this mini launch to my VIP club of 250 people. And now I'm doing like, I don't, I, I don't know if I made this up, but I'm doing like a media launch where I'm now having my VIP team launch my book to the media. And I awesome. just plan on continuing that elevation of, uh, you know, mini influencers to higher influencers and just climbing that ladder so that I can just, uh, I could speak just like I am right now to people who would be interested in this book. Now, what would you say to people who say, Andrew, You've got a killer podcast. You've got a huge audience. This VIP club had to be easy for you. You just send up a send out a couple emails. Boom, two hundred fifty people. I don't have that, Andrew. I'm I'm Joe Schmo on the street. I don't have a podcast. I'm just kind of getting to this online space. How can I create my launch team? Got it. Got it. Uh, well, here's another thing: is you know, I may ha I may have had I I won't lie. I, I it was pretty easy to create the VIP club, but. I, you know, I, I've been doing, I've been podcasting for, for a year and a half. I've been blogging for two years. So it's not like it was that easy because I've been working for free for over a year to be able to make it easy for the launch. And so that's the importance of building out, you know, your team, uh, you know, building out an audience. However, if I was in your position, because I was when I launched a podcast many uh, over a year and a half ago, um, I leveraged my friends. I leveraged my family. I leveraged mentors. And you don't need to have 
um, 250 people in your VIP club to make it happen. Honestly, if you had 25 people who, who were committed, that, that would make it happen for you. Like if you, because I wasn't asking so much from each one of these guys because there were so many of them, but like if you had 25 fully committed people, which you could get, like anybody could, you could post on Facebook, like you have friends, you have family, you got to open up your phone, like you got to start emailing people, like you can make it happen with your personal network. That's how I launched my podcast and, and grew it to, uh, you know, top ranked podcast. Um, you know, anyways, that's the podcasting, but um, you don't need to have 250 people. I can say that because the 250 people that I did have, they weren't, some of them were le leechers, some of them were not participating, but they consumed all the free stuff I gave them and they downloaded, you know, the book when I gave it to them for free. Um, and they didn't provide any value to me, which, you know, you just have to keep, you know, whatever, like you just keep walking past <laughs> that. But, uh, if I had a smaller niche group of guys, I would think of it like a team of Navy SEALs who are fully committed and on board with you versus having, let's say, I mean, I don't know if anyone's in watching this and maybe if like a team of like national guard guys who, who don't want to be there, who are just there for benefits or whatever. Uh, there's a big difference between a Navy SEAL and a guy who's who doesn't want to be in the Army. So I would think of creating like your 300, kind of like the Spartan 300, just a small group of guys who are fully committed to helping you. And how can you do that? Um, yeah, let me, I, I think it's a good time to talk about like uh, like – how I was getting people really involved and engaged was I was giving them massive free content. I created a survey and I said like, Hey, put your biggest question here and I'll answer it. And I would, I would go through the questions at the end of the day, there'd be like five questions, 10 questions. And I would create a little video just like this, nothing special, just using this camera here and this mic. And I'd answer everyone's questions about dating and relationships. And I'd say like, Hey, John, I, I, I see your question here about this answer his question. He comments and he's all engaged. Everyone's getting engaged. Um, so I'm providing value to these people. In addition, when I did the launch, I created a raffle system where I said like, hey, everyone who opts in and I see your review, I'm going to put your name in a raffle. And I use this website called Random Name Picker. It's some cheap tool. And I put everyone's name in there. And then I would film, I, I whipped out like this, you know, I just use like my smartphone here and uh, I'd film the random picker. I just made it kind of custom. I'm like, Hey guys, just got back from the gym. Here's, here, you know, I'm going to pick someone's name. And then I, I would send that person a hundred dollar Amazon gift card through, um, digitally. And then I would do one for free coaching. Like, Hey guys, I'm doing a free coaching session. Uh, make sure everyone gets their review in. And so everyone would, would be like, Oh, I want to get on there. And so, you know, I just created fun ways to get my audience engaged. That's great. I love that idea. Because uh, we're only a week out from you launching the book and you've got, I, I saw it, I think yesterday, and it was an impressive amount of reviews. How many are you up to now? Um, yeah, I, have, I, haven't, I haven't checked in the, in the last few hours, but it's like over 80, 80 reviews. Awesome. It's like four, four, 4. 4.9 stars. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's great. So yeah, that's the that's the power of you know the VIP club, and then you know lever, you know just giving massive value and just working overtime. <laughs> Let's talk about this um, this book trailer you did because um, I know you you did a really professional job on that, and it was a really good book trailer. You want to talk about why you decided to do that book trailer, and then also what have been some of the results from doing it? Yeah. Okay. So I created. I, uh, <laughs> I'll tell you exactly why I created a book trailer. It's because I, well, I love movie trailers. <laughs> I just put it that way. I, I go, when I go to the movies, I love watching movie trailers. That's like, I, I always want to get there early. So I'm passionate about film. And so, you know, what I would urge other people to like, Hey, what are you passionate about? Like, what can you do to like make this fun and exciting for yourself? Like, what are some things that you like to do uh, where you can make this like a really fun thing because launches can be very stressful. Launches can be uh, very hard on yourself and hard on your social life, hard on your emotional life. So, you know, I was just like, you know, I want to do something fun for this launch. And uh, I was like, why don't I create a book trailer? Uh, and this idea did stem from, uh, you know, an article about Tim Ferriss, uh, this guy who was helping Tim Ferriss with his book launches. And they said that when they um, when they launched a book trailer that it increased their sales by 10 times. So I was like, wow, that's, and then I looked for Tim Ferriss's, um, trailers and he does one for all of his books. Uh, there's one for the four hour chef. There's one for the four hour body. And I was like, all right, well he's doing it. And it, he's just doing these 60 second trailers. 
And I was like, I love doing trailers and uh, I love filming. So why not put something together? Uh, 60 second kind of epic trailer. Um, anyone who wants to check that out, you can just you go to YouTube and type in dating playbook for men trailer. It's a 60 second kind of epic trailer and it can kind of give you an idea of what you can do. Uh, and, and a lot of that footage, I just purchased stock footage and then bought, you know, some good high quality music and then had paid someone to edit that video. Um, I'll tell you a few things. The book trailer did one thing is when I put that book trailer out to my VIP club, I didn't tell them I was doing that. They were just blown away there. They knew that this was like, Oh wow. Like it's, it was kind of like woke them up. It was like, wow, Andrew's serious. Like, you know, this isn't just some ebook that he wrote, you know, you know, just for it, that took him 10 days to write. Uh, he's serious. Like he's investing time, money and energy into this. So I better be serious. And I, there was a, was a healthy response from my list. And I thought it, that it was a great way to kickstart the launch to my VIP club. Um, and then right now where I'm at today is uh, I, I, I use that same trailer for my main list. And then that was also kind of like a, whoa, Andrew created something here. And, you know, inside the book, you can do YouTube. Uh, you can do YouTube links inside the video where you can click on the video and it sends them straight to Amazon. And uh, how I did that, by the way, is uh, you just create a redirect because <laughs> you're not a, not supposed to send them to Amazon. I used knowledgeformen.com slash playbook, and then I just made a redirect that took them then to Amazon. So that's kind of how you can get, get past that. Um, so the trailer has been really cool. Another thing that I've done uh, is Facebook ads right now is super crazy with video ads. Like it's insanely cheap. So let me share with you this quick little thing that I did is I created a custom audience of guys who are interested in like, you know, single guys who are within the age range. Anyways, I made an audience of guys who I think would be interested in my book. And I, I put the video up, uploaded it into Facebook. Don't upload it into YouTube and then put the YouTube link, upload the video into Facebook. And then what happens is uh, Facebook loves video ads. I'm getting two cent views right now on Facebook, two cent views. Like when I saw that, I was like, oh, this probably isn't going to last. So I increased my amount from $25 a day to, uh, I believe it's $75 a day right now. And, um, and, uh, it's still two cent views. I woke up this morning. It's still two cent views. Also, this is what's crazy is if I did the same ad and I took a YouTube, the YouTube link and made a Facebook ad that sent traffic to the YouTube video and that costed a dollar and some change per view. So I went from two cents per view to, um, I mean, I went from a dollar and something per view to two cents per view. Wow. So like there's an insane ROI on a, however, you can't track it necessarily. You can cut you cause you, you don't know if they made a conversion or not, but it's such cheap views that like I'm getting likes on, you know, the page there's people sharing it. It's just so cheap that like, you know, why not do it? Like it's not yeah. costing me anything. Um, and I am seeing an increase in, in sales. Um, but you know, it's hard to measure all of that cause it's through Amazon. It's not through my yeah. own system. So that is the downfall is for tracking, but, but guys like this is, it's such cheap views and, uh, it's targeted traffic to an audience that I know would like this single guys who are within the age range who like this and that. So, uh, that's what I've done with the book trailer and it stands on YouTube forever, just pointing straight to that book. And so are you also in those Facebook ads, um, are they clicking over to, I imagine, to the to the book? Oh, yeah. In Facebook ads, you can put a link, uh, an outside external link, which is I'm pointing straight to Amazon. Got uh, it. So yeah. that's in the ad. That's not on the, that's not clickable on the video, right? After the video is played, it goes and it changes and then it does show inside the video. It shows click here and then you get to put what you want. Like I put like oh. get the book and then you can put the link right there in the video in addition to having it on the right side in the ad. So you could have Great. it in both places. So Facebook is is really pro video right now. And and so I think that I think the book trailer can definitely be leveraged uh, that way. What are your click cost on those? Does do your Facebook ads track the click cost? So the click is uh uh it's it's last I checked it was twelve cents. Oh wow. Yeah. That's super cheap. Yeah, it's super cheap. 12 cent clicks. So, I mean, if we run the math there, if, you, if you've if got 12 cent clicks, 100 <laughs> clicks would be 12 bucks. And on 100 clicks, I mean, if you convert 10% of that, that'd be 10 bucks sold um, for 
for 12 bucks. Um, how much is your book? 10 bucks. Oh, wow. So yeah, my book's, my book's a little more. Um, yeah. 70% Amazon royalty off of, I mean, if we're just playing numbers here, uh, off of 10% conversion, so 10 books at $10, 100 bucks, you get 70% of that from Amazon. So 70 books. I mean, that's $12 ad spend for 70 bucks, for 70 bucks, which is pretty dang good. And and the money for me is not made on, on the front end. I don't care about the exactly. world. Exactly. The money is all in in getting them into you know getting their getting that lead and getting them interested in my future higher ticket products and live events that I do. Yeah. And so at this point, you're you're getting paid for leads. You're getting great high targeted leads. You're getting a bunch of free likes on your Facebook page. You're getting engagement, shares, recognition for the podcast, for yeah. you, for your name, for your events, like. Boom! Coming from everywhere from this this one video and from these one ads, I really like that you're doing that, and it's amazing yeah. that you're getting such cheap clicks and and such great exposure from this video. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'd recommend the book trailer, or I would recommend just finding ways that you can be creative with something that you like to do that's fun for you while you do your book launch or any other launch for that matter. I personally like film and, and kind of video stuff and epic stuff, so trailer just made really good sense for me. But there's still a lot of other things you could do. Like, like I don't know, man. Like, like if you're into like giving things away, like maybe you're giving things to the homeless, or maybe you make some viral video around your book topic. Just I think finding fun ways to uh, create content around something that you organically like to do can really add a lot of value to your launch, and it shows that you're really passionate about what you're doing, uh, and that this isn't just about like you know making money, and that this is really something an expression of who you are, which I think connects really deeply to a lot of people when they're making a transaction. Absolutely, tell us about this uh, this super URL that you're creating. You touched on that a little bit earlier. Um, tell us a little bit more of, of what that is and how you're doing it. Um, okay, so I have a I honestly like I have a friend who who assisted me with creating the link. But if you just Google like how to create an Amazon super URL, what it is is it basically uh, when you click on this link, uh, it it searches the keyword on Google for the keyword that you want to rank, and then if you click on your book and then buy that book, then obviously Google says, whoa, people are searching for, I use dating for men as my keyword in my super URL. And then this guy went and bought it. Like this means that he's going to rank higher for that keyword dating for men. So what I did is uh, I changed all of my YouTube videos and I put like, hey guys, check out my new book. And I put the Amazon, you know, super URL, all of my marketing, the links is the Amazon super URL. It's not just like the one that Amazon gives you. So every time someone goes to and clicks on that link, it shows Amazon that this person searched for the link and then the result is there and they clicked on it and then they bought it or they left a review and they took some action. So when I first started this, I was like, I typed in dating for men and I was like in, the, in like 25 or 26, like you had to scroll down, basically no man's land. No one's going to buy it. No one's going to see your book and think this is a good investment if you're at the bottom. Um, and right now I rank number three. If you go to Amazon and type in dating for men, I'm number three. Uh, and, and the ones above me are like very established, you know, authors with hundreds and hundreds of reviews. Uh, and, and so I'm just this guy that just launched their book and, uh, and I'm at the top of the charts. And so that didn't take any more work. That was just creating a super URL and you could just Google how to do that. And I'm not going to show you here just how to create an Amazon super URL and then use that link for everything from now on. And that'll increase your, it's kind of like Amazon SEO, uh, for one yep. keyword. And so. Uh, that's that's really powerful because it doesn't take you any work. You just use that link every time you uh, send someone to that link. That's awesome. What are some other things that you've done on the marketing side to move books? Man, what what have I done? Um, so I have a podcast. Um, you know, touching back on uh, you know how I, how I created it took an old existing product, but that old product also had a lot of bonuses with it. So I, I, I then used all of those bonuses and created a dating toolkit because I didn't want to put all this stuff in the book that was just like unnecessary. It was just like I wanted the book to be really free flowing, but I do have supplement supplementary resources like, you know, this is a dating book. So I, I have a, I have a supplementary guide on like, Hey, how do you, how can you uh, be more effective with online dating? How can you be more effective uh, with your social skills? How can you be more effective with texting and, and getting dates? So these are supplementary guides that are important and relative to that book. And I already had them created 
and I created a dating toolkit that now people opt into, and that's how I'm collecting the leads. So I didn't have to create anything new I just you know packaged it up created a URL uh, you know dropped all that stuff on Dropbox and boom I had an awesome lead magnet that took people from reading the book to uh, now getting these resources and then entering into uh, the funnel so that was that was uh, another way to reuse old existing material that's sitting there that's still very valuable um, additionally, all the same pre-launch content videos that I used for that for that launch, I then used um, also as free bonuses. So all that marketing content, I just I just took the videos, chopped them up a little bit. Any any value that I found in those videos, made very clean videos, redid the landing pages, and then boom, I had these bonus videos that people would be interested in. Um, the VSL kind of the sales script uh, that I used, I, I used that. As a podcast episode so I just turned that video into an mp3 cut it up change some of the language because I was talking about things that aren't relevant um, and then created a podcast episode made a YouTube video uh, and uh, and promoting the podcast I mean promoting the new book so really just reusing a lot of existing content and then changing it up a little bit to make sure it makes sense and the language is correct uh, to be able to uh, make this a much less stressful process on myself yet still be very effective what are some of the top lessons you learned from from creating this book and from marketing it that would be helpful to others yeah um, yeah I, I would say you know really make sure that you dedicate you know the right the right amount of time for this you know I, I came into this thinking that this is something I could do on the side but as soon as I started getting into it I was like wow this is taking uh, this is taking a lot of time this is you know a lot of energy so you know I would really block out your schedule like I would go into your scheduling tool and not allow you know all these different appointments and I, I'm a podcaster so just really mapping out time for your book launch um, and, and, and getting everything scheduled and planned ahead of time um, I, I think for me, you know, I, I've learned a lot about, uh, honestly, like I feel like I can, I know what to do and that I can just do it again for another book. And I think that's honestly the biggest lesson because I think before you write a book, there's, there's so much. And, and I think even right now, if you're still listening to this or watching this, you're like, wow, Andrew's doing all this crazy stuff. He's doing, you know, doing movie trailers, you know, he's doing all these, all these VIP clubs. He's reached out to influence. Like, it sounds like I'm doing so much. Um, but you know, there's, <laughs> I, I think I know how to do it now and I'm already excited for another book that I want to work on. And the process is probably just going to be maybe 30% of what yeah. I just went through. And so yeah. that's kind of like, like I know that I can create a, a, a book. I know that I can do, you know, I know how to do the whole, you know, get an editor, product description, get the formatter, get your ebook uh, cover, how to create the VIP club, how to do all this stuff and just to replicate it. Like I could see myself doing a book um, at least twice a year. And, and I think it would just be great to have more real estate. Right now, I'm ranking you know, dating for men. That's a great topic to own for someone who's interested in becoming a more powerful, stronger man. Now I can get into other spaces uh, and own real estate for these keywords on Amazon that will make me passive income because I also, uh, you know, I, I just, I think I talked to you earlier, but I completed the audio book already. Um, yep. Submitted to ACX. And so now I'm on Audible. Now I'm on Amazon. Uh, I'm also going to be on iBook. So just having more real estate of really good, high quality products, uh, I guess, uh, that generate quality leads uh, and really take them down into your into your funnel so that you can serve them even more value. Because obviously, uh, you know, working with you in a group setting or coaching or consulting one on one is going to be where you can provide the most value and also uh, make the greatest uh, am amount of money in return for that service that you provide. So I'm I'm excited that I did this. Uh, I'm still involved in it, but I feel like I it's it's kind of like I felt like a lot of the work was kind of a, it's kind of like an iceberg. It's like all the work is like kind of is done already. Um, and I see myself doing more books. I see myself doing more book launches, and and I don't think it's going to be nearly as hard as what I've just done.
Yeah, absolutely. That's the best part. And one of my favorite parts is that once you do it once, it is so easy to do it again. Um, let's, let's talk about some mistakes you made throughout the process. What are some <laughs> things that, what are some yeah. things that you screwed up that yeah. that you learned from and that would be really helpful for people thinking about doing their first book or maybe uh, yeah. in the process? So so many mistakes, but that's what makes it cool because you know now I'm going to do it again and crush it. But uh, I, right off the bat, when I made my VIP club, and I think we even we even had lunch and, and uh, I, I made it open for anyone. Like I was just like VIP club is free. You get all this awesome stuff. Come on in. And to tell you the truth. Um, I had a really high conversion rate and I was like, wow, I'm going to crush it. All these guys. But what I should have done is what you suggested, which is kind of uh, survey them or make them kind of go through an application process so that when they come into the club, they feel like they had to, like they got in, like they made it and that they're special uh, versus them just entering. And it's like, Oh cool. Like, you know, I'm in, I'm going to, I'm going to wait for Andrew's free stuff now. Uh, so, I think I could have had a smaller team of let's say a hundred. I think if I just had a hundred, hundred guys who are fully committed, who I really vetted, uh, I think I could have had a stronger launch because I think I had too many people and, uh, and, and really, uh, really half of them were the main supporters and the other half were just there. So I think right off the bat, that's one thing. I think too, that I, I don't think I should have launched the book for free. Um, uh, or if I was going to launch the book for free, only do it for like 48 hours. I did it for, I did it for five days, which I think was too long. Mm. Uh, I think I should have done a 48 hour free period. And then I think I should have, you know, took the book to like 99 cents and then took it to like 499 and then took it to 999, which is the current price. What I did is I did five days of free. And so basically everyone who wanted it, you know, just ended up getting it <laughs> and then, and then, uh, and then turning around and then right now it's nine ninety nine. So it's kind of a big leap. Um, all in all, everything's going great. The, ra the rankings are in, the sales are good. Uh, the leads are flowing right in and the open rates on those leads are super high. It's like 70% on the, on the new leads from the book, which is amazing. Click rate is like over 50%, which is incredible. Wow. Um, so these are really good leads and, so that, that's one is like kind of the pricing. I, I think, like I mentioned earlier, like I, I didn't, I wasn't spending too much time on this. Like I was working on it, but I'm also doing a podcast. I'm also working on a, a retreat that I have next week. Uh, you know, so there's just a lot going on right now <laughs> and uh, I have so much going on. I'm doing this book launch. It's like kind of squeezed it in. And I think if I paid more attention, maybe the outcome could have been greater. Um, I, you know, that's, those are two of the big ones that come off the top of my head. Great. That's really yeah. helpful. What's the book? I know this is early, you know, we're only a week out. Um, and like you said, it's the, a lot of it's below the surface and the stuff that you'll see from the book is still to come. But so far in this time, since you've launched the book, what's the book done for your business? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it is, it is like, it's only been less than a week. Um, but I, you know, what I can tell you is it's given God, my existing audience, uh, I have guys reading the book and you know, they're, they're like, I got your book. Couldn't stop reading. I read, I read it in 12 hours, read it in 14 hours. I did not sleep. I was up till 6am reading your book. Like I'm getting these type of guys who, you know, love my content, but what's happening is like, they're, they're I'm, I'm vulnerable in my book and I'm giving them my, my best lessons, uh, inside the book. Like I don't hold back. Like I, I don't have some, you know, dating upsell, like all my dating stuff that I know is in the book. And so guys are getting transformed and now they're emailing me these testimonials. They're just so happy. And so I think what it's done so far is it's developed an even deeper connection with my audience, which is what I want. Like I want there to be, I don't want to be this guy who just sells you stuff, puts out stuff, sells you stuff. Like I want to really, I want guys to know my story. I want guys to transform. I want guys to, you know, really improve their lives. And this book is helping people do that. And so the testimonials are flying in and um, it's getting people really excited about my amends. My people who are already coming out to my retreat are even more excited. Um, also guys feel like, dude, like you are actually living it. Like you're not just someone who you're not, you're not someone who is uh, just, you know, who's just talking the talk. Like you're out there actually hustling, taking action. Like, you know, I just wrote this book. I'm, I'm, I just, you know, I got a live event coming up next week. I've got so much happening, so much stuff I'm working on. And 
I think, you know, my audience really enjoys seeing that. They're like, yeah, Andrew's out there just, just grinding, just hustling, like finished an audio book in like three days, um, just grinding. And yeah. I think it's just more credibility, authority uh, for your existing audience and for future uh, leads coming in. And I think that's what the book has really done so far. Uh, it's only been like like six days, so I mean, uh, the results you know are yet are, are yet to fully be in. But I, I know that it's I, I'm so happy that I did this book. Uh, it was something that I had in the back of my head for so long. I remember you know sitting down with you and kind of talking, and uh, I was like, yeah, I kind of want to do this book. You know, you obviously have you know self publishing school, so it just kind of you know, and then just kind of from that moment to actually having a book on Amazon is is really cool. And to say the least, it's like, um, you know, like your family sees that you have a book, like your yeah. friends see that you have a book, and it's like I have family members um, like 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 kind of hitting me up, and they're like, oh, like I'm so proud of you, like now asking me questions about business, ask it just. It just see it just creates more of an authority for yourself. Like you're yeah. you're kind of an expert in that space, and and you're you're out there grinding. Like a lot of people are just saying, like, man, I love what you're doing. I can't, you know, I wish I had the courage to be able to do that. And I, you know, it's 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 all possible, man. Like I did not yeah. know what I was doing. And you you have a wait list for your event, right? Too. Yeah, I mean they're all they're all sold out. Um, you know, the July one sold out. Uh, September one sold out. I actually just opened up a November one, and uh, I think you know that's creating space for the guys. You know, obviously you just got the book. Uh, there's going to be a ton of guys who are going to be interested in that. Uh, but yeah, there's you know if you're interested in the retreat, just kfmretreat.com, and it's just a men's event three days here in San Diego. That's great. And I'm sure those are going to keep selling out, especially now that this book is out and you've got just tons of qualified leads coming in. I mean, you're going to be an event machine uh, to keep <laughs> up with, with all this demand. I'm, I'm excited for you, man. Yeah. With, with, with that, um, we can we can go and wrap. And I, Andrew, I just want to say I appreciate you coming on, man. It, it's, it's great to hear the whole story. And like I said at the top of the interview, it wasn't that long ago when you were just thinking about doing the book. And then here we are, fast forward a couple months, it's out there, it's selling like crazy, you hit the top of the charts, we're only a week out, you've got a bunch of qualified leads coming in, you know, it's great to see how you took action and had so many results uh, in such a short period of time. So I think this will be an encouragement to a lot of people who are just that couple months out from doing their book and they can see what you've done and, and some great lessons in here from the launch team to the, uh, the times that you do your promos and the pricing and stuff like that also on the book trailer and the cheap, cheap views and cheap clicks. That was really awesome. So, so great lessons all around. Um, and before we wrap, where can people go to find out more about you and about the book? Yeah, yeah, right on. So knowledgeformen.com, you just spell it out. And the book is the dating playbook for men on Amazon. You can just search on Amazon for that. And yeah, it's, it's been an honor to, you know, have, have worked with you and, and kind of gone through self-publishing school before, you know, while I was doing this to help me really just anytime I had a challenge, anytime I had a frustration, um, I feel like I am, you know, a good marketer. Like I feel like I I've done a lot of launches. I feel like I look at all these books. Like a lot of these are marketing books and <laughs> I know I felt like, you know, what is Chandler going to help me here with? <laughs> um, um, obviously, you know, he's written books and stuff, but like, I was like, I, ah, you know, I just kind of brushing through it. But as I was going through my launch, and I was just to like, I don't know what to do here. I would just go look. You, you, you had a, a whole lesson on it. And I was like, oh, wow. He has a whole lesson on my exact problem and was able to just keep moving forward so that I didn't have any roadblocks. I just all my answers were there. So it allowed me to really uh, publish on time and have the launch go well. Everything's gone well despite some uh, things I would redo. Everything's still good. I would just like to you know always improve. But man, anyone who's thinking about doing a book, I, I can't tell you, like, I, I don't think you could ever look back on your life and be like, man, you know, I wish I really didn't write that book. I, you know, I wish I didn't do that. That was a waste of time. Like, <laughs> I, think, I think you're always going to look back and be like, you know, I wrote a book, you know, like you're going you're to have a physical book, audio book or, a, you know, an ebook. I think you'll always look back and be very proud of that moment when you published a book. And I think it's just an, an awesome experience that everyone should go through. And who knows, because it could completely launch your career. Um, and you know, there could be more books to come. And one last thing too, is I always say this on like my kind of podcast and stuff. It's like when some, or when I'm coaching guys, it's like when, when you're thinking about doing something, 
and there's a storm ahead of you and there's a lot of work in front of you, uh, you know, I think stop looking at yourself in the mirror. Stop looking at like what's how hard it's going to be for you or how expensive this is going to cost or the risk involved and really look at yourself in the mirror and, and, and look beyond the mirror and look at all the thousands of people out there who need you to write your book. Like you have some lessons and some skill sets that you've learned from going from, you know, uh, some crazy disaster in your life. Maybe it's, maybe something's happened to you and you can take those lessons and you can inspire millions of people. It's, t it's completely possible. Like it's not a joke. Like you can do it and don't look at yourself. Like think about the other people who need you to write your book. Um, and I think that can inspire you to take action. That's great, Andrew. Well, thanks for the kind words, man. And thanks for coming on and sharing your story and appreciate it, man. We'll talk real soon. All right. Take care guys. Have a good one.